Hi, we are going to look at finding a general solution today and we're going to work through this practice task which actually takes us through all of the steps um, that we've previously looked at of finding a unique solution, being able to look at the geometry of the planes represented, re represented by the equations that we've got and also finally finishing on finding a general solution um, and putting things in terms of T and giving a particular example and so on. OK, so just pause the video and have a read through the example. And then I'm just going to shrink that down so we've got some room to start working on it. Now, before we get going with setting up equations, we need to determine what our variables are. So um, define what we're going to represent as number of oranges, sweet potato, yogurt, so on. Now, normally I'm an advocate for using letters that represent the thing that you're doing. So like O for oranges, S for sweet potato. But because the O is too similar to a zero, that could get confusing. So in this case, I'm using X, Y and Z. Now, for each of the requirements for vitamin A, C and calcium, we can set up an equation of um, how many of the oranges, uh, sweet potatoes and yogurts we've got to put together towards the total that we want in Penny's lunch um, that's given in that second sentence at the top. So when looking at vitamin A, however many oranges we've got, we'll have 400 um, micrograms per orange. So we'll do 400 times X. For the sweet potatoes, we'll have 1200 per sweet potato. So we'll do 1200 times the number of sweet potatoes. And then for yogurts, it's 800 times the number of yogurts. And we want that total to come to the 800, uh, 8,800 that was specified at the beginning of how much we want. For vitamin C, if we go through and do a similar thing, it'll be 110x, 570y, 340z is equal to the total of 3,380. And then our third equation made from the calcium. Now we'll go over to the graphics calculator and input those um, values into our equation solver. So we've got equation solver here. We're doing simultaneous equations F1. We've got three unknowns and then we put those coefficients in. So I paused the video. I've put all of the answers in there. And now we are going to go to solve that with F1. We get x is 10, y is 4, and z is 0. So x 10, y 4, z 0. And then we need to answer it in context. So Penny should have 10 oranges, 4 sweet potatoes, and no yogurts. OK, let's take a look at the next thing which is that Penny has switched up the brand of yogurt being used. So this yogurt now has 60 uh, micrograms of calcium instead of the 65 that we started with. So what we'll do is change that 65 in our equations and see what happens. So where we had these three equations before, instead of the 65 for the calcium, we now have 60. So we need to change that out on our equations. Now, if we put that into the graphics calculator, uh, we can go back here and just simply change this one. And we try and solve it, we get a mass error. So we need to go down the algebraic route. So there is no unique solution. Another way of saying that is that the equations are inconsistent. Now that could mean one of two things. Either there is no solution at all, or there are infinitely many solutions. So I'm just going to relabel these equations as 1, 2, and 3, so we can continue working with them. I'm going to multiply them up so that um, they have the same coefficient in either the x, y's or z's. And actually, before I get to that step, I've gone through and simplified each of those equations down to the, the lowest form. Um, so on equation one, I've just divided all of those terms through by 400. On equation two, I've divided them by 10. And on equation three, I've divided them by 30. OK, now let's try and match up um, coefficients. And it looks to me like the z's might be the easiest ones to go with. Um, but I really could do any of them. So let's do that. So now I've got all of the z's matching up. They're all 34z, but none of the other coefficients match up that we've got here. Um, we don't have anything happening to match up x's and y's on the other equations. So therefore, we don't have any parallel planes. And so we move on to our next stage of working this through. 
we're going to carry on with that algebra. So if we do equation number 4 minus equation number 5, we get 6x minus 6y equals 36. Then we'll do equation number 6 minus equation number 5. And we'll get 40x minus 40y equals 240. Simplifying each of those down, we get x minus y equals 6. x minus y equals 6. So if we lined them up, we would end up with getting a solution where we try to eliminate either the x or the y, we end up with 0 equals 0. This is something that is always true, no matter what x, y, and z are. Therefore, we are in a situation where we have infinitely many solutions, meaning that the planes of these equations meet on a line, like the leaves of a book. So then we need to go on and find our general solution. And to do that, we let one of our variables be equal to t. I've chosen to do x. You could just as equally do it for y or z and work through from there. So if x was equal to t, and we take a look back up here at um, either this equation 7 or equation 8, then we get that uh, t minus y is equal to 6. So y would be equal to t minus 6 when x is equal to t. Then we go back and look at the other equations to figure out what z would be. So I'm just, I could use any of equation 1, 2, and 3 here. I'll go with equation 1, so x plus 3y plus 2z. So if x was t, 3t minus 6 for 3y plus 2z equals 22. And we get down to um, z equals 20 minus 2t. Then we need to think about what the limits of t might be. Now, um, since we are measuring the amount of something um, in these items, remember we were uh, measuring uh, milligrams of vitamin uh, A, C, and calci calcium in micrograms. So we can't have any of these go below zero. So if we consider each of them in turn, uh, the limits on x mean that t must be greater than or equal to 0. On y, t, must, t minus 6 is greater than or equal to 0, so t must be bigger than um, 6. And on z, 20 minus 2t is greater than or equal to 0. So uh, 20 is greater than or equal to 2t, or in other words, t is less than or equal to 10. So now we've got some limits. Um, it's got to be bigger than 6, but less than 10. And the first limit we had of t having to be greater than 0 is taken care of by it being greater than or equal to 6. Now, our final thing is to give one possible solution in context. Uh, so we pick a, pick a value for t and then say what um, that would mean for x, y, and z in context. So I've picked t as 8, being smack in the middle of the range that we've got. So in this case, x would be 8 because x is equal to t up here. Uh, y is equal to t minus 6, so y equals 8 minus 6, and that's 2. And z is equal to 20 minus 2 lots of t, so z would be equal to 4. Now in context, this means, remembering what x, y, and z stood for, Penny can have 8 oranges, 2 sweet potatoes, and 4 yogurts as one possible combination for her lunch to meet all of the requirements that we had back up at the beginning here with this situation of what she wanted to have for her vitamin A, C and calcium requirements.